Hi everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and this is the ASRock 990FX Extreme 4 motherboard. It supports the AM3 Plus socket, so it will support the new upcoming Bulldozer 8-core CPUs and it also has the 990FX chipset. We are just going to dig right in and go for an unboxing here. So first let me remove the box within the box and extract the motherboard itself. Oh. Aha! We have a box within a box within a box. All right. So there's the motherboard. We're, we're going to come back to that. We have a couple other boxes in here, which I can only presume will include our accessories. Yes, I am correct. Okay, uh, quick information here on the ASRock, ASRock XFast USB. That's for their USB 3.0 ports on the board. Uh, we have a 990FX Extreme 4 software setup guide for the included software. We have the quick installation guide, which is, which is quite a thick manual here, but that's because it has multiple languages all listed down the side there. We also have our driver disk and software installation CD right there. Um, it's best to head over to the Azeroth website to um, download the latest drivers for the motherboard when you do the installation, but keep that on hand, on hand just in case. All right, this is a heat pipe cooler. It's a bundled active cooling fan to improve heat dissipation. And, um, you know, let me just double check here because frequently in situations like this, they will give you an extra fan to use in case you do water cooling because water cooling doesn't always provide quite as much air movement. Uh, here, flexible design. Uh, oh, yes, okay, I'm right. If you use water cooling, they are giving you an extra fan there to increase airflow over your heat pipes. And they also have this little guy in here, which is, aha, look, a tiny little screwdriver. I like to keep those just in case. So, hey, bonus screwdriver, even if you don't use that little fan. Uh, we have a couple Molex 2 serial ATA power converters right there for your power supply. We have an 8-inch audio cable right there. We have a USB 3.0 front panel port here. Uh, it's actually 3.5 inch uh, slot right there. So you can put that in a 3.5 inch bay. Goes back to a 20 pin uh, power or USB 3.0 connector that you plug into your motherboard. Also has a mounting bracket here for a 2.5 inch drive. So sort of a combo item there. You can put a, for instance, SSD on that port. You don't necessarily lose your little 3.0 slot when you're mounting that in there. Also, if you don't want to use that 3.5 inch uh, item there, they have a PCI bracket as well that you can mount that to uh, to put those USB 3.0 ports on the back of your case. Here's a couple, uh, I should say four, uh, serial ATA cables. These are SATA Vision 3, six gigabit per second compatible. Two of them have L brackets on one end. We have, ooh, ribbon cables. We have an IDE ribbon cable and a floppy ribbon cable because there's an IDE and a floppy port on this board. For those of you guys hanging on to your legacy devices. Uh, here is an input-output shield for the back of your case, all color-coded nicely right there. And then I can only assume that in this mysterious package, here we go, is an SLI bridge. And yes, that is correct. You have an SLI bridge for those of you guys who are going to be running dual video cards with SLI. It also is Crossfire X compatible. And you usually get your Crossfire X uh, bridge with your Crossfire compatible video card. For those of you guys wondering why that's not included. Next up, the motherboard itself. Let's take a closer look. And here's a look at the full motherboard itself. As we can see, it has a dark brown PCB in the back. We also have uh, blue and white highlights here from uh, most of the plugs. We also have some gray heat sinks. And here you can see the scattered throughout the uh, gold Japanese-made capacitors, uh, which are high quality for a longer lifespan. Uh, also, while we have a wide shot here, I wanted to point out our fan headers. Apart from the CPU fan header up at there at the top, we have five more. There's a three-pin there, three-pin here, and a three-pin there, so three of them additionally at the top. Then we have another... Uh, three pin fan header right there and also a four pin fan header uh, nestled right in there. Uh, now let's uh, go over the details of the board and we'll start down here like we usually do in the bottom right. Uh, here we can see this little heat sink there and that's for our Southbridge chipset. That's an SB950 Southbridge. 
We also have uh, some front panel connectors there. This is actually power LED and speaker header. The rest of our front panel connectors are over here on the left, right there. Those other little white pinouts right there. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We have a debug LED right there. That's great for uh, finding out any problems you might be having if you're having a tough time getting it to post. You can use that to uh, troubleshoot. We also have surface-mounted power and reset buttons right there. We also have the USB 3.0 20-pin header right there. You can use that with the included bracket that I showed you with the accessories. Front panel connectors once again. Here's your floppy connector. Com header out right there. And we have a couple SATA ports actually down here in the bottom left of the board. Those are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. Actually, all of the SATA outs on this board are SATA revision 3. Only difference here is these two are controlled by a Marvell chip. That is a Marvell, wait, I have it right here, 88SE9120 chip that controls those SATA ports. You can actually see that chip right there. Uh, let's talk about our PCI Express slots. Now, uh, again, the blue and white slots here. The white ones are uh, actually these short ones here, PCI Express X1 here and here. Also a couple legacy PCI slots right there. And then we have three PCI Express full length 16 slots. Uh, the top two are wired for full 16 speed PCI Express. That's where you're gonna wanna set up your uh, Crossfire or SLI if you're gonna go with a dual card solution. It's nice that these have triple spacing. It gives you an extra space in between for some uh, extra uh, airflow or to plug in your PCI slot right there if you so desire. Again, if you're running uh, Crossfire X or SLI, these will still run at full 16 speed, both slots. And then you have a four speed slot down here at the bottom. So if you want to run a triple card setup, you'll have X16, X16, and X8. Uh, this also supports quad SLI and quad crossfire, and that's if you're running dual GPU cards. Moving right along, let's talk about the right side of the board over here. Again, the SB950 chip, Southbridge chipset right there, and that controls these uh, side-facing serial ATA ports. Again, all of these are serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. Here also you have your IDE port, so you can use that IDE ribbon cable if you have an older IDE device that you want to plug in. Moving up the side of the board here, we have a couple USB 2.0 uh, pinouts here for USB 2.0 ports. We have a FireWire pinout right there for connecting FireWire, either front or, front or back panel. We have our 24-pin standard motherboard power connector. And then we have our DDR3 slots right here. And uh, this supports dual-channel DDR3. You can have up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 uh, RAM installed, uh, though it is harder to find the 8 gig DIMMs right now. Uh, right here it says DDR3 speeds of up to 2100 megahertz uh, are supported. That's an overclock speed, of course, but you can bump it up to that if you so desire. Moving along, we have our AM3 Plus socket right there. We know it's AM3 Plus because it is black, the socket itself. Also, the uh, you can't really tell, but the actual pinholes there are wider with AM3 Plus than they are with AM3. Uh, here's your AM3 Plus uh, uh, mounting bracket here for your cooling solution. This is improved because it doesn't block off the side, so it allows for a little bit better heat dis dissipation, and according to the uh, specs I've read, it keeps your MOSFETs and everything a little bit cooler. So nice that, to have that there. Uh, again, here is your 990FX uh, down below the uh, AM3 Plus socket. Uh, 990FX North, uh, Northbridge chipset underneath that cooler there. This has a heat pipe running up here to your MOSFET coolers uh, that are under here. It has an 8 plus 2 phase uh, CPU power delivery design. And uh, then above here we have our 8 pin EPS supplemental CPU power connector. That is right there. Um, am I missing anything? There's an SPDIF plug up there. And uh, I think that's about, oh wait, we should mention a couple little items a little bit further south down here. There we go. <laughs> we have our front panel HD audio connector right there, as well as an infrared header. And finally, let's talk about inputs and outputs on the back. Uh, here we have a couple PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard. We have a clear CMOS button right there. Uh, we have some audio outs, that's a coax audio, as well as a uh, optical toss link audio out for digital audio. Uh, USB 2.0 ports, we have a couple here, a couple more here. We have a LAN port there, that's a Broadcom BCM57781 uh, controlling that Broadcom gigabit uh, RJ45 port right there. 
Uh, we have a couple more USB 2.0, FireWire, uh, eSATA, that is uh, also compatible, with Serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gig. Uh, we have a couple USB 3.0 ports right there. While I'm at it, the USB 3.0 ports on this board are controlled by eTron EJ168A controllers. And then uh, we have our HD, I'm sorry, our, our audio outs, just uh, standard 8th inch audio jacks here in the back. It is support does support 7.1 channel and it's controlled by Realtek ALC892 codec. And that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the ASRock 990FX Extreme 4 motherboard with the AM3 Plus socket, 990FX North Bridge, and SB950 South Bridge. If you are purchasing this motherboard, bear in mind it is forward compatible with AM3 Plus CPUs from AMD, also the Bulldozer line of 8-core CPUs, but also is backwards compatible with AM3 CPUs, so you can check the ASRock uh, website for a full list of compatibility options. For Newegg TV, I am Paul. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you want to see more just like it, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. We will see you next time on Newegg TV.